Hi, I'm Laura Higgins, and this is my video of me painting fiddleheads, and you're going to actually see me unpaint them now. <laughs> uh, when I start, I use yellow paint so that I can get the composition the way I want it before I get too far. And in this case, I started with the fiddleheads being a little bit further to the left, um, and then I decided to move them to be very centered. So you can see now I'm using a darker yellow to... Uh, really um, clarify where everything is, adding a bit more detail so that when I start going in with the realistic colors, um, it will be exactly where I want it to be. Um, and I apologize for <laughs> my hair and my nose and glasses appearing many times in this video. Um, so this is a commissioned piece. Uh, a wonderful stained glass artist, Jennifer Pop, had seen another painting of mine, which is of fiddleheads, but much tighter, like much earlier in their unfurling process, and um, asked if it was for sale, but it had sold quite a long time ago. And so um, she decided to commission me to do a new piece where the fiddleheads were a little bit more unfurled. In her stained glass work, she uses fiddlehead imagery quite a lot, and um, it is uh, so they are um, plants that she sees around her in her on her property quite a bit because they live right beside a woodland. And in fact, her business is called Woodland Stained Glass, and I'll link to her. Um, business in the notes. So this was the image that she really enjoyed from some photographs that I had taken of fiddleheads. Um, photos I'd taken at the same time as the photos I used for the other painting. And I had cotton right down on the ground so that I could be at the level of the fiddleheads themselves. Instead of looking down on them from above, I wanted to be right level with them, which I think just gives them a sense of, I don't know if importance is the right word, but it heightens their presence, their um, significance, and I think it just gives a really beautiful perspective on things to see them at their own um, height level and see the world that they're in from that perspective. I love these coppery wrappings that the fiddleheads emerge from. They are so beautiful and so I always enjoy painting them and that part is... Um, the gray blue is also part of the plant that they're that they grow out from she wanted some cedar put into the front of the painting and so I'm just playing around with that here I really didn't know what I was going to do with the background because the photograph had a very dark shape on the right side in the background and then a very light area uh, on the left side and it didn't seem balanced to me you can sort of see it in that photograph there and because I didn't really know what to do I started just working on the fiddleheads again and adding in that some cedars to see if I liked it and where I wanted to put that so this is sort of a real experimentation phase for me you know there are things where I am very true to the photograph in this case um, I'm using the photograph to get the detail in the fiddleheads but I have changed the length of um, how far the one on the far top left is open I elongated that I've changed the angle of them a little bit and I'm changing some of the foreground and definitely I'm going to be changing the background. But I do work from photos to get a lot of my detail. I 
don't always have that ability to just imagine things out of my head. There are some artists that can do that, that are brilliant at that. And I do need photo sources. It helps me to get that realistic look. And obviously if I'm doing a portrait or something like that, it helps me to get a likeness. Now you'll see in the background, there's a, uh, a tablet with an image where the background is mostly dark. So I was struggling so much to figure out what to do with the background that my husband suggested, why don't we just put it into Photoshop and see what we can do and see what a black, darker background might look like. So that's what we did. And it really did help to bring the fiddleheads more into focus. Having that um, darker background throughout really made them pop and um, I really liked that. So I decided to change the plan for the background to a darker background and um, keeping everything blurred. I kind of wanted to have like a bit of a suggestion that there might be some sort of evergreen behind them, which would also connect with the cedar sprigs in the foreground, which I haven't done the detail on yet. I'm just, they're just placeholders, but you can see I've already reduced the amount of cedar and I'm probably, I think I'm going to be taking out a little bit more as well. And, uh, I like to make the background look blurry so that what's in focus is in the foreground in this image. And so it takes um, some time to just with acrylic, I don't do a lot of wet and wet work, but I do have techniques that involve sort of dry brush and um, a little bit of wet and wet in order to get that effect. And I'm also working on getting the side, making the image wrap around the side just slightly so that when I paint the edges black, um, from the front, you won't see that black uh, edge very much. I do put a lot of time into the little details. Here I'm just adding layers of color to um, give the cedar some definition. I actually went out and took pictures of some cedar uh, trees and cedar hedges to try and get this more accurate because I think the cedar that were in the photo sources I had originally were flipped upside down. And I think the underside of cedar is a little bit different than the, the upper side, the side that points up to the sun. So I wanted to get that more accurate. So I did go out and um, take some more photos to use as references for that. Um, these photos were actually, um, this photo didn't have the cedar in it. It was uh, actually the cedar. I, I used um, a couple other photos I had taken to reference the cedar sprigs. The thing is that in the spring, the fiddleheads are coming up in what is mostly dead leaf litter and twigs and things because it's been winter and they're one of the first things that comes up in the spring. And so most of what's around them is not green unless it's evergreen, like the cedar or a nearby evergreen bush or tree. I'm just putting some final details in now. I do get kind of fussy about the details, which means it takes me longer to finish a piece maybe than it should be, but I just, I really love getting those little details in. There's me putting my signature on. <laughs> And there's the final piece on my easel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. <laughs>